Hello guys, Sapir here from FE4 and welcome in the second video tutorial for a GMSH. So we'll have a look at the tutorial number two. So this is the kind of model we'll be building using this tutorial. Uh, but first, let's start from scratch. Okay, so what I've done here is that I, com I have commented out everything except the first comment and we'll go one by one and I'll show you what each of this comment is actually doing. So you see that the first tutorial, and uh, the tutorial number two, is basically starting by including the tutorial number one. So it's using this include t1go, and this is basically as if you were copy-pasting all the content of the first tutorial inside the second tutorial. So here we have our rectangle that have been built in the first tutorial, and we'll add some new things to it. So you can add new points, new, new curves. So I had if, for example, I add point number five and a line that con connects this this line, you see that I added this portion here. Um, and you have also some uh, operation to transform uh, existing entities, so translation, rotation, etc. So, and this is used like some kind of function. So, if you do translate, you put the coordinates of the movement uh, of the translation. So minus 0 0.02 in the x direction, and then uh, under the the parenthesis here you have what you will actually be moving. So I, I want to move the point number five. So that's this one that I just built. So let's save this. Let's reload the script, and you see that my uh, my point has moved, and the line which is connecting the point number four the point number five has automatically moved with it. Uh, you can also do a rotation. So the rotation is taking three arguments. So first it's taking the, um, the axis of rotation. So this is the axis Z of rotation. Then the center of the rotation. So this is the this point, so basically this point here, the point number four, and this is the actual value of the rotation, so minus p uh, divided by four, and we'll be moving the point number five according to this, so rotating this point in um, minus p, p on five, so let's uncomment that, and uh, reload the script, and uh, now you have this uh, this rotation has been executed. Now um, what you can do is also you can duplicate a point and uh, translate the duplicated point. So if you want to create a separate entity from a point that already exists, you use this function duplicata point three, and then you put that into the translation because we will move a, a duplication of the point. So let's comment out this, reload, and you see that I have another point here that have been created. So what it did is that it took the point three here and it, it duplicated it and then it moved the copy here. Now let's create a line seven between the points number three and the point number six. So even if this point duplicated is new, it has an ID. So the ID is not written here. Uh, but we can get this ID, so I'll show you uh, how just after. Um, and here the ID is 6 because if we go with the mouse over it, we see that it's called point 6. So if I want to create a line between point 3 and point 6, we know how to do it. It's line, give the ID 7 to the line because it's the seventh line. Uh, and then, then save that, reload. And we have a line. Now we just need to connect the point 6 to the point 5 with another line, like that, and that's done. Now let's create another curve loop that will loop 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, those four lines, and create another planar surface. So we don't see a difference, but it created a surface. So now we have two surfaces, one here and one here. And now the thing is, um, so instead of using the graphical interface to obtain the value of those entities um, that 
we can save the return into a list. So a list is identified by two brackets like this, my new surfs. So my new surfaces will be saved uh, and, and this command will be executed. So this command will basically uh, take the surface 1 and 11. So this one and uh, this one. It will duplicate them and will move them of 0, 12 in the x direction. So here. And then it will save the ID of those surfaces into this uh, this list. Let's save, let's reload, and you see that I have now two times the same shape. Now how do I know um, what is inside this bracket? Well, you have, um, you have a function called printf that is pretty useful, and you have to be careful about the syntax as you see, you can uh, put some string here and you have, um, you ha so if you have done a bit of C for example, you know that uh, this is showing the, the um, what, what is written here. So here I put the zero to take the first element into a list, I put the one to take the, the, the second element into a list because the list start at zero and this should print into this window the IDs. So reload the script, go to the bottom of my message window and you see that you have this message in blue new surfaces 12 and 17. So that gives me the ID of uh, those two new surfaces. So this is surface 1, surface 11, surface 12 and surface uh, 17. Now the lists, uh, so you, as you saw, you can get uh, access to the elements by putting the value like uh, my list zero, my list uh, two, etc., to to access the elements of the list. But how do you know how many elements do you have in a list? Well, you can obtain that by uh, using the pound uh, sign. So if you do like that, len equal pound my list bracket, then the the total number of elements of the list will be saved into this len variable. Um, okay, so, uh, and by the way, you can also use parentheses uh, instead of brackets. Now let's have a look at volume. So we'll, uh, until, until now we'll build, uh, we'll have built points, lines, um, surfaces, uh, let's build volume. So for that, we need to actually build a 3D uh, mesh. So let's build three points in uh, depths. So these points will be, let's read all the script, so we, we don't see it like that, we don't see them. Okay, and if I move the camera, you see that those are the three points, which are now going in the Z direction, so in the third dimension. Now you can build also a point by uh, getting the coordinates of uh, another existing point. So you do that by creating a list x, y, z with brackets like this, equal to the point and you, you put the number, the ID of the point into brackets. And, um, and th this can be useful to create a new point that uses the coordinates included into this bracket like this, but, but you can change one of the coordinates. So if I do this and I reload the script, you see I have also points that appeared here. So this basically copied the one, two, three, four points uh, in uh, in this dimension here. And and now I can build lines in between those points. So you know it's the same method. Just uh, now we're doing everything manually, but I'll show you there's a simpler option. So. I just uncomment everything from here and uh, building the surfaces. And finally, when you have the lines, you have the loops, you have the surfaces. The last thing to build is just the volume. So load and you see that I have uh, a volume element. Now, because it's, um, it's easier to um, if this can be extruded, for example, it's much easier to just use extrude. So there is an extrude function that works like this. Extrude, 
you give it the the direction of the extrusion and the size and then you pass it the surface that you want to extrude and you see that here the surface is saved into this uh, list my new surfaces so we'll be extruding surface number um, so it's the second surface stored into this list so this will be this one so I just save this reload and you see that this time this has been extruded as well so if I wanted to extrude this surface as well well I could just use the same instruction just copy it but instead I'll just put zero into this one and you see that both would be extruded now um, now the thing is the extruded surface um, you they do not have mesh size so you have to use this option mesh size and pass it all the, the new points that have been created and give them manually a mesh size so here we're giving it like this mesh size the IDs of the tags of the points equal to LC multiplied by 3 um, yeah and finally we can define some groups again so if you want to give a physical volume to this uh, this volume these two volumes we can we can do it like this and uh, now the it's ready to to mesh so you know if I reload the script and I click on 3d so it will mesh everything uh, in uh, in 2d and 3d right uh, and by the way you know this representation shows the mesh kind of transparent like that and you, you only see the edges but you have other ways to represent if you don't like this way you can go on this very small menu here uh, not this one the one with the the o and you have all mesh options i think it's also here in the toolbar uh, you have mesh for example visibility and if you activate like this faces then you'll be able to see the mesh um, you know like uh, like in a normal FEA software you'll you'll see the the mesh sets like that now the last thing uh, for this session is um, if you use some comments like extrude like that what you are actually abstracting a lot of things you don't um, you don't write out all the points and the loops and the lines and everything that have been generated when you do this extrude uh, so if you want to basically um, save the the geo file which has everything into it you can use uh, you have a way to do this so you can save file geo unrolled so let's try this save this geo enroll lists uh, reload the script mesh again and if I go into here now I have this geo enrolled and you see that if I look at that I really have everything uh, all the volumes all the points generated everything into is into this um, this bar here now if you using uh, open cascad you can just export in BREP format and this will also do exactly the same thing give you all the points and uh, everything and okay that that's all for this uh, tutorial number two so see you for the next tutorial and thank you very much for watching if you like this video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel thank you very much for watching